The Bible talks about the sins of the fathers being passed down to the third and fourth generation. Well, as it turns out, medical science backs up this statement. It's called epigenetics. And as Laurie Johnson explains, he can also show us how to break those so-called generational curses. Thanks to these new DNA home test kits, you can learn all about your genes and various health issues just by filling one of these tubes with saliva and sending it to the lab. While those results may reveal a lot, they don't always tell the whole story. Expert Dr. Michael Roizen of the Cleveland Clinic compares epigenetics to a light switch. Our behavior can silence our genes or activate them. And which of your genes are on or not are to a large degree your choices by things you do. So is epigenetics important? Absolutely. Our DNA is made up of genes. Our behavior, such as what we eat, smoke, even think, dispatch markers to the top of our DNA, which tell our genes to turn on or off. So if you're stressed and not managing it, you're going to turn certain genes on that cause inflammation. Even pregnant mothers can affect their baby's genes, such as those that retain fat. If you don't get enough food during pregnancy, your body the baby's body, if you will, says, hey, I'm going to come out to an environment that's sparse in food, so I'm going to turn on the genes that allow me to save food and be, if you will, very efficient. That means that when you eat food after you're born, you're going to gain a lot more weight. The reverse is also true. Even if a female is unhealthy before pregnancy, she can turn things around for her offspring if she adopts a healthier lifestyle while she's pregnant. The new field of epigenetics began in 2003 here at Duke University. Dr. Randy Jertle proved DNA is not destiny with his landmark agouti mouse study. The mice carried the agouti gene, causing obesity, diabetes, and jaundice. But when Jertle fed pregnant females lots of vitamins, her offspring ended up thin, healthy, and brown. I feel like we've made a contribution to science that will be there literally forever. Dr. Jertle compares epigenetics to programming a computer. The deterministic part in our system is the DNA. That's the stable part. The free will part comes in through the software that tells that deterministic system how to work. We are, in effect, a programmable computer. That's how we were made. And the behavior of both parents can alter their child's gene expression, and sometimes these changes it, yes. stick. You can see that, in effect, what God, I think, was telling us is that this is the way you're made. And if you mess with this system, you're not going to alter the genome so much, but you're going to alter your programs. And those, since they're not totally erased necessarily from generation to generation as they go through the egg and the sperm, can literally give rise to problems in the next generation, in the following, in the following, out the four and five generations. As epigenetics research proceeds, scientists hope to pinpoint how specific areas of the genome are affected. Still, one thing's for certain, lifestyle choices can bring out the best or worst in our DNA across multiple generations. Wow. Laurie Johnson's with us. Laurie, you know, I went to college once upon a time, years and years ago. Go Yale. Yeah, well, this is what Debbie now went to Yale, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was Yale Law School. But anyhow, uh, there was something called the Mendelian Law, and it had to do with the fact that uh, your genes are fixed, that the color of the hair, you know, all the stuff you sent down was totally fixed, and you weren't going to change it. And that, that was the, the Mendelian Law, mm -hmm. remember? Well, that's not true. All right. Well, it kind of is true. Go on. Well, I know. What have you learned this epigenetics? You, you know, are, are we saying that the way you live can actually affect the genetic makeup that is passed generation to generation, and 
that it might go through the third or fourth generation? Yes. All right. Here's the thing. The genes, our DNA, those are fixed. Okay. You can't change those, but you can turn them on or off. And sometimes totally on or off like a light switch or more like a dimmer switch where you, you activate them or suppress them. And it's our behavior that dictates what our genes do. And so we're talking about things that we eat, All right. things that we do like smoke, things that we think, such as childhood trauma. Sometimes these are passed down from generation to generation. They've shown in fruit flies, for example, 14 generations. One of the best studies that demonstrates this is they had um, mice, yeah. rats actually, and they, they loved the smell of fruit. Okay. And then the, every time they smelled fruit, they would shock them. Uh -huh. So that when they started, then they stopped shocking them. And when they would smell fruit, naturally they'd be afraid uh -huh. and very fearful. Well, they would then breed these rats and their offspring would be afraid when they smelled fruit. And then their offspring also. So that fear was transported down from generation to generation. The fear, you, you people, you know, that's what's so weird about this. The fear is passed on. Well, what if somebody is like an ungodly sinner and, you know, is that kind of thing passed on too? All types of things. They did studies, the population studies, where boys between the ages of 9 and 14, when their sperm were being formed, yeah. when they smoked, their offspring had greater incidences of heart disease and other health issues, and then their offspring too. So we know for a fact these things are true. Here's one thing we know for sure, right. is that we are, we are programmed with genes, our DNA, All right. and then our epigenome, our okay. epigenetics, decide whether those genes are turned on or off. Dr. Jertle described it yeah. this way, is uh, your genes are loading the gun, your epigenes are the trigger, whether or not you pull wow. them or not. And our behavior, the things that we eat and, and uh, the things that we're exposed to, chemicals that we're exposed to, can turn on and off our genes, um, increase them or suppress them. And those are a, one of the main times that we do that is in the first trimester of pregnancy. We saw that with the Agouti Mouse study. Yeah. But also, this happens uh, in a big way after you're born in your childhood. They did an example where um, these rats, they, had a, they have a gene that helps them manage stress. Right. And their mothers lick them and groom them mm -hmm. in childhood. And uh, those, that gene is, it serves them well in later life. Well, then when they put them with a mother that ignored them and didn't lick them and groom them, then later in life, they did not respond to stress very well. So that gene was suppressed. But, but whoa, this is, you know, revolutionary though, isn't it? That what we're saying is, it's not just the next generation. I mean, the, the little mouse doesn't get let to groom, but his genes go th into the next litter of babies and the, the, down the line. It is revolutionary. It's mind blowing. <laughs> It's so exciting, and yeah. this is the the scientific world is absolutely on fire about this because this was just discovered in about 2003. So now this is absolute fact that the scientific world recognizes this as fact that epigenetic changes are passed down from generation to generation through the sperm yeah. and through the egg cells. Good so degree. in those cells, mm. genes that are turned on and off are passed down to future well, generations. If somebody is a killer, I mean, if, if he abuses his children, then the, the child will, there'll be a child abuser, then the next generation will have that desire, that epigenetic desire. That's the thing that researchers are looking into now is what genes are in the sperm that have been activated epigenetically and what genes are in the egg. So to answer your question, it depends on where those epigenetic changes were made in uh -huh. what cells. So it's the sperm and the egg cells that cause things to be passed down to future generations. All right, well, well last question. If people talk about a generational curse, and that's obviously what, now how do you reverse it? How do you get out of that cycle? That's a great question. Well, that they're looking into uh, 
pharmaceutical ways to turn off and turn on epigenetic markers. Mm -hmm. But we do know that our behavior can have a lot to do with that. For example, let's say you have the APOE gene, which is for Alzheimer's. We know Dr. Bredesen came on the show not too long ago and talked about his research that a lot of our behavior can silence even the gene for Alzheimer's. And uh, we talk about diet. And what's really interesting about this, it's things that we all know. Diet, mm -hmm. exercise, exposure to chemical, and stress. The things that we think and feel are all things that, that improve our, our genetic makeup. So a merry heart doeth good like medicine, and that's what, that actually affects your genes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And... You really, they, they found that you can't be depressed and joyful at the same time. And um, what causes our epigenetic markers to turn on and turn off are chemical reactions within our body. Mm -hmm. For example, the release of serotonin, yeah. which is a chemical in your brain. And when somebody says something to you like, Pat, you're just really special to me. I pray for you every single day. Yeah. I probably just gave you a serotonin shot because I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And so that, that chemical reaction is going to have um, epigenetic consequences and do your genes uh, and do well by your genes. That's Whereas true. if you're feeling bad and sad and depressed and nervous, that can affect your epigenetics. Fantastic. So all the things that we do affect our genes. Uh, you having fun. You, we, we've got you on the cutting edge of research. It's really fun. Well, I've been telling everyone I know because this is important for people in their formative years. Yeah. Um, and especially for people who haven't had children yet. And for pregnant women especially. Oh, the things that you do. Take a prenatal vitamin at the very least. Um, and then also those formative years right after birth really do set the epigenetic tone for children, so you know, spread the word. And if you're interested in, in this, you know, search epigenetics. There's a, there are great information you online. Another series coming up about the gut floor. Is that coming, start tomorrow? Actually, we're going to have a story tomorrow about it and then more in-depth reports, which again, talks so much. The overall writing theme is the things that we do greatly affect our health. Mm -hmm. So it's been estimated that 80% of disease and other health conditions are caused by things that we do, which is great on one hand because it gives us control, but then on the other hand, we have a lot of responsibility and our gut health is one of those things. The way the things that we put into our body, particularly our food, but also antibiotics yeah. and other chemicals can really affect uh, our gut health and, and how that expresses in our entire body. Looking forward to this series. You are just terrific. I'm so pleased with what you're doing. I, I, I'm with the audience. You know, people aren't hearing this. You know, this is really, this is groundbreaking science. It really is. And uh, you're very humble because these were your ideas. <laughs> this epigenetic story, <laughs> spoiler alert, Pat called me on the phone and said, hey, I want you to do a story on epigenetics. Right. So. <laughs> God bless you. Well, we look forward to the next one. Mr. Laurie.